<clears throat> Hello, we start our teaching in the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank God for another opportunity to come together to learn God's word. Let's have a word of prayer and then we continue our studies on the subject called teaching on prayer. This is the course we have started and we will continue today. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your goodness and grace. We thank you for your all the blessing you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for your hand of protection and provision and blessing and your faithfulness that reaches to the sky. Bless our time of learning your word and speak to us in a very special way, Lord. Let something tremendous happen in our lives. We pray for the mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit that would come upon each and every one of us. Revive us, Lord, we pray. Energize us, Lord, and use us for your glory and for your honor. We want to be an instrument in your mighty hand, to be used by you to glorify your name on this earth and to see your kingdom come wherever we are. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So we continue our studies on prayer. Prayer, as we have been talking about, very universal. People pray in their ways. Some pray three times a day, like a Jew. Pray three times. In the Bible, we find it. And then... Muslim pray five times, Hindus have their own ways, so it's very universal. So we find here, I'm very sorry, this pops, bothering me. We find that relationship of mankind um, with supreme being and Bible tells us that from the very dawn of human history, we have relationship of God with man. So, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Lord God, among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man. So here we see communication. Here we see relationship of supreme being and Mankind, from the very beginning, we see this happening. So God wants to have relationship with us. But that relationship is broken because of sin, as we know. And then people have started to call upon the name of the Lord in all different ways. Uh, Satan has perverted. Satan has twisted people from the truth. So that's very tragic, but the desire is always there because we are spiritual being. We are created in the image of God. So Desire is there, as I said. So relationship with God from the very beginning, it has been, and throughout the ages, people have been longing. But interesting, 
that in every religion, people are trying to find God, trying to reach to God. Now here, God of the Bible is reaching out to man. And the Bible says that in the cool of the day, they heard the sound of the Lord. So God initiated, God spoke, God communicated. And then we find very interesting that God said, where are you? The first question, where are you? So God was looking men rather than as we find in other religion, man is looking for God, searching God with all different ways. So God is reaching down to us. And that's why the Bible says in Luke chapter uh, 19, what's number 10, that the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. Very interesting. God is looking for searching for, seeking, and Son of Man, Jesus Christ, also came. So first prayer we find uh, in the Bible, or we can say that, that when Seth was born, then people started to call upon the name of the Lord. And Seth also had a son, was born, and his name was Enosh. At that time, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. As we know that relationship was broken, then Adam and Eve have to leave the garden. And when they left the garden, then the third murder in the history of humanity happened in chapter number four. Chapter number five, we find Seth was born and then his son Enosh and people started to call upon the name of the Lord. And then, of course, when we see uh, chapter six, there is a different story. And then chapter 7 onward, uh, then talk about uh, Noah's flood. And then when we read to chapter number 10, they had desired to build Babel, the tower, and uh, until God um, brought confusion, Babel, uh, babbling, confusion. Okay, so the tower of confusion um, uh, couldn't... Uh, reached to its climax because there was confusion and um, people still have uh, this desire that we let's make ourselves a name okay now here we find they call upon the name of the lord in chapter 10 they said let let's make ourselves a name let's build a tower so that's where the philosophy of humanism began. The focus became, was on man rather than on God. So here we have the name of the Lord. Here we have name of man. Let's make ourselves a name. Okay. So that's where the confusion happened. And wherever there is humanism, there will be confusion. Um, that's the way it has been throughout the history of humanity. And where there is a desire to, to focus on God, there is order. He brings order in our life. When there is a focus on God in the church, in the family, there will be order. When there will be focus on one man, there will be confusion. Okay, when man start to take um, all the glory and attention in the church, it will be chaotic. Anybody, whether it's elder or one person, you know, church member or a pastor himself. So it's, uh, it's uh, good to learn. Then the first prayer we find was in Psalm 3. And the Bible ends with beautiful prayer. The last prayer in the Bible is that the spirit of the bride says, come. And let him who hears says, come. And let he who thirsts come. Whoever desire, let him take the water of life freely. Okay. This, this we find in Revelation chapter two, 22, what's number 17. 
And then what's number 20, 22 and what's number 20 and with he who testify to these things says, surely I'm coming again. Come Lord Jesus. Again prayer. Come Lord Jesus. What a beautiful, you know, way to end, um, you know, the, the Bible, how beautifully it ends. With this prayer, come Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is, of course, is our prayer. So you see the Bible, how it is um, systematically mentioned all the prayers. So, of course, the psalm is in the middle of the Bible. And it's about prayer. It's about our praise and worship. Okay. And that's why we were created. That's why Book of Psalm. Strategically, God put that in the center of the Bible, in the middle of the Bible. So it tells people that the central purpose, main purpose is to worship God, to pray, to talk to him, communicate with God Almighty. Amazing how the Bible is um, organized and so uh, systematically, methodically, it is um, written and organized. Everything is in a rightful place. Like, uh, for example, uh, Psalm uh, 22, Psalm 23, Psalm 24. Psalm 22 speak about um, that Jesus is our Savior. It talks about a crucifixion. Okay, very interesting. Uh, more and more I, you know... Um, focus on God's word, more I'm blessed and uh, touch and um, I thank God how um, the word of God is so uh, written in an order. Um, it's amazing. So Psalm 22 talks about crucifixion, that he's our savior. Okay. Then Psalm 23, he's our shepherd. Now he's taking care of, uh, taking care of us now. And Psalm 24 talks about his king. Okay, so Psalm 22, um, his ministry in the past, what he has already done. Psalm 23, what he is doing now, his present ministry, he's a shepherd, he's called the great shepherd, okay, the, the shepherd of our soul. And then Psalm 24, that he's our king, and he's king and the king of kings, okay, his future ministry future role uh, so he is um king praise and prophet okay so it's really amazing how the word of god is written so prayer is of course communicating with god prayer is joyful uh, prayer is expressing our love to our heavenly father we have been talking about these things prayer is also supplication okay uh, intercession, thanksgiving. Um, as we have been uh, talking, and I can uh, share a couple of these things with you, supplication and then um, prayer, communication with God, devotion, prayer, and praise and worship. So it's not only that uh, a list with our needs, but our uh, thanksgiving, our um, expression of love, how great you are, how awesome you are. We express his uh, loving kindness. Your loving kindness reaches to the sky. It's that just worship, expressing our heart to God. And of course, as we were be, we we talked last time that sure we bring our request to the Lord. He's our Father, and He said, "Ask and it shall be given to you." So, acts when we talk about uh, adoration, uh, then we have three confession, uh, then we have uh, uh, tea, thanksgiving, and as our supplication, as uh, we use that uh, acronym. So prayer, 
And uh, the Bible say, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Therefore, God gave him, gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity. Okay, there was perversion. Uh, they didn't worship God and as they should. And then we know what happened, that they started to worship the creation rather than the creator. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5 and 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing in everything, and give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And then in Colossians, And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. So the point here is, prayer is be thankful, and expressing our thanks to God, our love, to God. Now prayer is an incense, is a sweet fragrance to God. Wow. The way that fragrance was, incense was um, in the in the uh, temple, okay, as the priests used that uh, sweet fragrance, incense in the temple, our prayer is a sweet Fragrance to God. When we pray, it reaches to God and enjoy that here is my child who is expressing his heart to me. Here is my child, my daughter, my son is expressing his love to me. Okay. It's a, it's a, you know, naturally speaking, when, um, our children express their love to us, it brings such a joy. And they use uh, Papa, Papi, Daddy. Oh, I love you. Okay, so it, it, it delights us. And you know, in the same way, when we express our love to our Heavenly Father, it delights Him. It's a sweet fragrance. It's so beautiful when we pray. So our emphasis has been more and more that, yes, we come with our needs and we should. Nothing is wrong with that. But that's not the only focus. We must come to God with our hearts rejoicing, with our hearts um, um desire to express our love to God and communicate with him and adore him. He's worthy of our adoration. Okay. Jesus taught us to pray uh, when the disciples said, teach us to pray. And here in the, um, uh, the Lord's prayer in chapter six, um, we find what's number nine to 13. That how our Father who art in heaven. You see expression of love again. Our Father. That it's not like that. Oh God. Oh some kind of supreme being. Oh deity. But here is our Father. That relationship. It's so awesome. And then. Uh, we can go into detail and then where we pray, of course, um, in the church, uh, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Okay. And uh, but we can pray anywhere, anytime. Okay. We don't have set time. We don't have any, uh, you know, any particular place where we can, uh, we can pray anywhere, anytime. And uh, our prayers go into the Holy of Holies, like uh, uh, Joshua. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is little error. It's uh, chapter two and what's number seven. There are not there, in book of Jonah. We don't have uh, 27 chapter. Sorry for that. So our prayers go into the Holy of Holies. When he was in the um, belly of the fish, uh, he cried out to God, and uh, he said. Uh, 
My prayers go to the Holy of Holies into God's temple. So we pray to God, um, the Father, in the name of the Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the pray, as Jesus has taught us, and then the Bible says, don't worry about how well you pray. The Holy Spirit make intercession for us with groaning, um, which cannot be uttered, okay? So how we pray, okay? Uh, a child doesn't need to uh, get lesson in school how to talk to his uh, or, or her or, or earthly father. No, it's just normal, it's just natural, okay? And the Bible says the Holy Spirit help us when we don't know how to intercede, how to express, okay? He help us to pray. Amazing. God's answer to prayer, uh, God is with us in our prayer when, of course, two are together. Jesus said, I will be in the midst of them. So God does answer our prayer. Sometime it is no and sometime it is yes. And as we learn that sometime when we, our um, need is right, but the timing is wrong. So God wants us to grow. And when um, the timing is right, but our motives are not right. Uh, we, we need to grow. And then God wants us to um, uh, do thing, everything according to uh, what is the best for us. Okay? So sometimes we need to wait. Uh, pray according to God's will. And he will answer our prayer. Um, because God sees the bigger picture, as we know that we our um, knowledge is very limited. Our um, way to see things is not the way God sees. And that's why God said, my ways are higher than your ways. So uh, when when God doesn't answer our prayer, um, it doesn't mean uh, that he doesn't love us. It doesn't mean that he doesn't care. Uh, this is a mentality, um, you know, uh, especially humanistic and uh, all those people who start to blame God. Recently, um, my girl was talking to um, some of her friends and one uh, Christian girl uh, said that recently one, I don't know, a Korean uh, singer died. And, uh, and uh, sh uh, she said, oh, my faith is faltering. Uh, I have question about God, that why God allowed these things? Um, does God care? Okay. And, uh, you know, this is... Um, very tragic uh, for every bad thing we start to blame God and we say does God care? Seems like God doesn't care. God is not on the scene. Uh, but we don't accept our responsibility. Yes, God is sovereign but we human beings have our role and responsibility. So if anything happened, we just start to blame God. And this is very much, uh, you know, in our world today. It's very tragic. So here we see God, how God answered uh, prayer, like Joshua prayed and the sun and the moon stood during the battle. Um, for a day, 
we find that in Joshua chapter 10. Now they are going to the promised land. Uh, Joshua is the leader now. Let me read that from God's word. So we get the picture, whole, whole picture. Uh, book of Joshua. Chapter 10. Now in chapter 6, we find um, uh, here we have Jericho. They came that uh, great victory they won. And then we see how they were uh, defeated uh, because of the sin in AI. And then we find what's number twelve. Then spoke Joshua to Yahweh, to God, in the day when God, let me get that uh, another translation. Okay. Then they speak Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and the moon in the valley of Edgelon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jeshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and um, and hasted not to go down uh, about the whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after that the Son, uh, the Lord, hearkened unto the voice of uh, people for the Lord fought for Israel. Of course, it talk about uh, more about the rotation of the earth. Okay, uh, as we know, the earth revolves around the sun. Then we find uh, in um, Isaiah the healing of Hezekiah, and God asked Hezekiah asked for God for more time to live, and he received fifteen more years uh, when he had that uh, disease. Uh, so to speak, cancer, and God said, you're going to die, and he cried out to the Lord, and how God um, extended his life, and the 15 more years God gave him, 
and then the sign was the sun uh, dial um, 10 degrees or about 20 minutes backward, God said that he heard his prayer and saw his tears. So here is the confirmation uh, we find um, in this example. Then prayer of Elijah for fire from heaven at Mount Carmel. Then Elijah <clears throat> prayed for the drought and then for rain. You know, there was a famine. Uh, there was uh, no rain for three and a half years. And then our God intervened. Then Daniel was touched by an angel who flew swiftly and touched him during evening prayer. And then, of course, uh, uh, we find in Daniel chapter 6 how uh, God closed the mouth of lion. Okay? Then Cornelius' prayer and an angel, uh, a man in bright clothing, appeared saying, your prayer is heard and your arms are, um, you know, are in the remembrance of before God. So here we see um, Cornelius, who was an Italian. Um, he was there in Jerusalem uh, serving his country, but he was very um, helpful. He was, uh, here we find that in um, Acts chapter. because God has planned for every person on this earth as we find uh, in the word of God anyone who sincerely see God God um, reveal himself to that person and in Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, okay? Uh, he was commanded over 100. Uh, in what was known as Italian regiment, he and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Amazing. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a, a vision. He distinctly saw an angel who came to him and said, Cornelius. And Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is Lord? He asked. And the angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa and bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter, and he's staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. And then, of course, uh, um, Peter had the vision. He saw that uh, unclean animals, and uh, God said, go and eat. And he said, how can I do that? I'm a real Jew. I have never touched any unclean thing, but um, God was telling that you will go to Cornelius' house, okay, who you consider unclean, okay, but I have planned. So, uh, you know, Peter went there and Cornelius and his family came to the Lord. So they were like seeking God. They were not Christian, okay? But in their ways, they were praying and probably they had the revelation of Jehovah God. So he was praying regularly and um, he was uh, helping poor people. And God said that your prayers and your gift to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. So it's very interesting that when we help, as the Bible says, the one who um, uh, 
uh, help a poor lend to the Lord in the book of uh, Proverbs. Okay, so it's something special when we help poor, when we help the needy. So here, your offering has come as a memorial and your prayer, and he prayed regularly, and he was God-fearing. Amazing. And then God uh, revealed, revealed himself uh, through an angel, and how uh, Peter went there and, uh, um, you know, uh, Cornelius uh, bowed on. Here comes the priest in the house. Okay, and Peter said, uh, you, you don't need to bow down before me. I'm a human being like you. Okay. Um, you know, Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relative and close friend. What's number 24? As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said, I'm only a man myself. While talking with, with him, Peter went <coughs> inside and found a Lord gathering of people. Wow, amazing. He had invited even his relative. He said to them, you're well aware of it, that it is against our law for a Jew to associate <laughs> with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any object. May I ask why you sent for me? And then uh, Cornelius explained the vision. And then uh, Peter started to uh, tell about Jesus. That how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. You know, God um, is really revealing himself to all those religious people. We hear so many wonderful testimony how Muslim, our Muslim friends are receiving um, vision of Christ, um, dreams and vision, and how um, Jesus is revealing himself to them. It's amazing. We really thank the Lord. And we pray that it would continue to happen. Remarkable stories. So here we see um, we should, um, of course, continue to pray um, because prayer is our great weapon. As the Bible says, be alert, be sober, pray um, because the end is coming. And the Bible says the effectual fervent Prayer of a righteous man or a woman avail much. Oh, wow. It's amazing in the book of James that when we pray fervently of a righteous man, so it's effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous. So righteousness is very important. That we say, Lord, I'm here to communicate with you and you are holy. And if there is something that is not right in my life, I pray that you cleanse me. I want to be righteous before you. And with that pure heart, I want to worship you. I want to adore you. I want to intercede for um, for people and then it avails much as uh, in this context in James chapter 5 um, uh, James talk about Elijah was a man 
uh, just like us and he pray and uh, God shut the heaven. Okay. Because that was a, a prayer of a righteous man. So fervently he prayed. And that's why the Bible said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your prayers be made known unto God. Hallelujah. Be anxious for nothing. As we know that there have been so many um, uh, miracles God has done it. Yesterday I was, uh, as I was traveling from Finland to England and I was, um, you know, reading about the role of prayer and medical science. So it was very fascinating article. Uh, it really touched me that how they were, uh, without telling some patient, um, uh, there was some cancer patient um, and uh, they divided into two groups. One was uh, that uh, for prayer and then they checked the result, what was the effect of uh, prayer and without. And then there was uh, two groups of people with the uh, heart condition, okay, heart problem. And then they checked and how the recovery was. It, it was a remarkable article. And we know that um, without a shadow of doubt how God answered prayer. I can tell you the uh, story of my, or miracle, I should say more, uh, that happened in the life of my younger brother, uh, Pastor Khalid, who is in uh, uh, Germany now. And when he was very small, he had bone cancer and uh, doctors gave up hope. So my parents brought him back from the hospital and they said, we cannot do anything, he's going to die. So my parents were praying and then my grandpa um, took my younger brother Khalid in his arm and prayed. And uh, my mom and dad were kneeling somewhere and crying out to the Lord. Um, and they said, Lord, if you give life to Khalid, um, we promise we dedicate this boy for your work, for the ministry, and uh, please answer. And uh, while my grandpa was holding uh, Khalid stopped breathing and he was motionless. Nothing was happening. But they kept praying and all of a sudden he started to move and he opened his eyes. And God, uh, doctor has said, no hope. But God gave him new life and he's still alive, healthy, strong, and we thank the Lord. I mean, it's amazing what God did. And we can share many miracles. I, be I believe you can share recently uh, one of our preacher here. Um, his name is uh, Joe Gisby and uh, his mom was... Um, Mom had cancer. God healed her uh, miraculously. And many, many other wonderful testimony of deliverance and healing and power. Uh, God is really amazing. Who does amazing things. So um, wonderful. So, of course, priority of prayer is very important. Um, as we can see that here, uh, pray, praise, repent, and then asking and yielding to his will. And then, and then we say, push, pray until something happen. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And it will happen. Continue to pray. 
So we stop here. And if you have something to share, please feel free. Um, let me put this, stop the screen. Yes. So, if you would like to share something, please feel free. Uh, oh. There was no audio. So there, there, there was no audio, Sister Miriam? I could hear you. Oh, thank you I very think, much. I, I was disappointed. In the beginning. <laughs> you were worried. I was a little disappointed that I... <laughs> no, the, the teaching, teaching was for wonderful. about an hour <laughs> without audio. <laughs> Oh no, the audio is on. The audio is on. <laughs> you can smile. You can relax. Okay, oh, it thank was you. It was powerful. It it always teachings on prayer always leave me with this question: What happens if we pray, yes. and what doesn't happen if we neglect to pray? Mm -hmm. Like how many things God is inviting us to participate with him in and see things happen by prayer and even today I, w I met with a friend <laughs> and as they were dropping me off home my dear sister Bronwyn said let me pray for your knee before you go <laughs> and as she prayed in hungry jacks God restored strength back to my knee and all the stiffness was gone and in that little example there, what happens when we pray? Yes. And what happens if we neglect to pray? Like mm. I would have walked out there with a stiff knee. I don't know whether, you know, but just that little moment, pausing for two minutes, mm. what happens? So mm. I'm always inspired to pray more and pray in tongues when I don't know what to pray. And Amen. just have the courage, just have the courage yes. even to pray for people. Sure. I love prayer. And the whole thing about communication with God, that's our mm. utmost form of prayer is to Amen. have that love Amen. relationship with the Lord where we're sure. talking to him to his heart. Yeah, it just grows us. It's wonderful. Anyway, yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sister Miriam. And of course... As you know that I even requested you to give us some teaching on prayer, but I know you're busy. Well, my mum's ended up in hospital, so I've had to rush off to Australia to visit. My Sorry, mother. my mother is in was in hospital. I see. She may have had a mini stroke. She has stabilized, but I'm in Australia for another ten days. Okay. okay, we'll keep uh, Mama in prayer. Please, please do. Yeah. And I mean, this is a really bit of a nasty problem, but she hasn't moved her bowels for two weeks and it's really causing difficulty. So if we can just pray for a miracle there. Mm. Um, Amen. Give her the start walking again. She stopped walking. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Certainly. Nice to see you. I heard your voice earlier. I knew you were around. <laughs> I should be. I live here. Charles is in my place. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Can't wait to come one day and gang up. Yeah, with come you guys. In England. Yeah. Oh, actually, you don't really want it. The weather is terrible. <laughs> yes. We collected him. My, my friend Andrew and I collected him from Gatwick Airport last 
It's like the monsoons of India. The whole roads were all flooded. Mm -hmm. But come when the mm -hmm. weather's better. It would be nice having you one of these days. Well, no, I'm coming. I know I'm coming. Yeah. Yes. yes. We'll prepare a way for you. Hallelujah. And we have a wonderful reunion here. Hallelujah. Where, where's where's here? England or Finland? No, England. <laughs> oh, here we're in England. Right, yeah, I'm in England. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And of course in Finland. Yes. Then the trip will continue. And we're planning to drag these Solomon Islanders over. It's time. I'm feeling it's time. There's such a stirring in the spirit. I'll send you a clip from the combined fellowship I went to on Sunday here of Solomon mm -hmm. Island fruit pickers and workers who have come to work in Australia. And the worship that God is releasing through them is going to plant seeds of revival back again in Australia. God has sent back the missionaries from the lands that were missionized by the whites. They're coming back. And it's mm -hmm. beautiful and it's powerful and it's anointed and I can't wait for the Steves and the Peters and the Doshuas and those that we've been working with to mm. come over to the land and places and just release what God has placed in them. It is truly alive and it's real. It's not just a hope. It's unseen evidence mm. of good. So exciting. But I'll send you guys a clip later. I'll send you at 2 4. Just Thanks, so you can yeah. see what yeah. I witnessed on Sunday. And I was in tears and God was saying, This is the fruit of prayers for 25 years that God would send the islanders out with their worship. And God said, this is the answer to the prayers. Mm -hmm. oh, so well, prayer is important. And I know Steve and the guys went on a mission trip to Makira and they've been praying and seeking God. And the 50 people got baptized over that couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. on the weekend. Yeah, it's called the Steve Sanders Testament, eh? And we showed it at my church on Sunday, just gone. And my oh. associate pastor, we prayed for you all. Oh, it's my wonderful. Well, no, it's, it's an average-sized church here in the south of England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God is doing great things. And we're about to come and invade that side of the world. So get ready. You're welcome to I want to leave the place. Yes, we need it. It's ridiculous. Steve, you ready? Peter, you ready? Well, Pastor Steve said 20 degrees Celsius was cold. He wants to see cold. Come to England and think, Pastor Steve, are you there? Oh. You mm. thought 20 Celsius was cold in Australia. Wait till you get to Finland. It's minus 20. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hello, Pastor Steve. You're... You're famous in England. We showed your video at my church on Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. <sighs> Hallelujah. We were praying for you all, Pastor, Pastor Steve, Steve, on Sunday. Steve, on Sunday. The social Pastor, Pastor Mark, Mark himself, himself and the church, whole church were once some of the church, yeah. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. We don't <laughs> <say> <laughs> people saved in England anymore. Very, even one or two, if one or two people get saved in England nowadays, it's like, it's not like the time of John Wesley, you know. Yeah. Used to be, but not nowadays. Yes, well, the missionaries have missionized, and now the fruit is coming back. The fruit from the islands is coming back to stir up the fires of the northern countries, and I know God is going to do amazing things together. Together, it's going to be incredible. Paul, we're coming just wait. You're very welcome. If you don't, well, you'll finish, but finish origins. But Pastor Steve, if he thinks 20 Celsius is cold, won't you come to England and Finland, Pastor Steve? You see how we dress. <laughs> this one, Charles, is wearing a jacket. I like to come to Finland because I really want to, um, to experience. I like, I, I really like the sauna. The sauna. You're welcome to it, yes. No, no, you already have sauna. It's permanently <laughs> sauna. Solomon's. No. I, I experienced I experience sauna with them. Okay. 
your experience is um, in the... I knew she was coming. Um, water we were deep you because you have an immersion in, yeah. in freezing cold water. And then when you get back to Australia in the sunrise, you won't say 20 Celsius is cold. They have a minus 20. <laughs> Did you hear me? He's on mute. Okay. What's up, Charles? Yeah. So I said we will make a hole in the, you know, snow. And in that freezer, you know that some do, they dip in the freezing cold. Yeah, we've got a term for that in England. Mind you, yeah, a little bit in Spanish, mucho loco. Uh, but um, every Jan every 1st of January, I, my friend Andrew and I showed Charles for the first time the English Channel. He said, over there on the other side is France. But some people every first of January swim the channel. They swim all twenty-three miles, all seventy, all thirty kilometers. I wouldn't. Mm. I don't like the cold. I like it warm. I want to come to the Solomon Islands, rather than down under in Australia. It's nice and sunny. Not like this cold place. <laughs> Pastor Steve, can you see how I'm dressed? This is April. This is supposed to be spring, semi-summer in here, and I'm dressed in all, all these clothes. Anyway, you'll have that blessing when you get over here. Yeah. So Charlie Jaldi. Would you would you kindly close up? Yeah, sure. I heard the lesson from message from mm -hmm. down the corridor. Father, let's have a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For the time in the presence of God, Lord, as our dear brother has shared on the great subjects of prayer. The disciples asked you, Lord, how to pray. And you've given us, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we can pray in our own language or English and tongues and pray in the Holy Spirit and the realm of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. And may we saw to new sights and as Miriam has the vision uh, for people from down under and uh, Solomon Islands to come up here to the Northern Hemisphere. We certainly need a breakthrough in England, probably they do, in Finland and most of Europe. Because uh, we're living in the post-Christian age and we cry to you, Lord, for a new move of God, a breakthrough in England and the Western Europe, Western European nations, Northern European nations like Scandinavia. And may we soar to new heights. Hallelujah. In the realm of your spirit in prayer and intercession and praying in the Holy Spirit. Be with each and every one of us in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God bless Amen. you, dear brothers and sisters. God bless you. Good yeah. to see you. Everybody. And we keep you yes, in God. prayer, uh, Sister May. Thank you. Thank and Mama. Yes. There's your camels. Right. You have them in Australia. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.